Hi guys, today we'll be showing you 10 smart tips to use your iPhone more effectively. These tips are especially useful for those who are new to using Apple's iOS operating system. First, let's talk about the messages. There are some helpful tips in messages app that you should know in order to use it efficiently. And the first tip is called text replacement. Simply speaking, it means keyboard shortcuts. So instead of typing the sentence, which is mostly time consuming, you just type in a few letters and then the whole sentence will pop up. For example, if we go to messages app and I type in, I want to ask, what are you doing? Instead of typing the whole sentence, I just type WD. And you can see at the bottom, the whole sentence pop up. You just click space it will automatically insert that whole sentence into your texting box. So with text replacement, it's very fast. You don't have to type the whole sentence and it saves you a lot of time and also sometimes it could be a life saving as well. Because like while you're driving on the road and someone sends you a message and then you reply by saying like, I'll call you when I get there for example. You just type in a few letters and the whole sentence will pop up and you just send it quickly. So it won't distract you from driving. That's a good thing about this feature. So to set the text replacement or keyboard shortcut, go to settings, general, Scroll down until you see the word keyboard and then at the top you can see keyboards and then tech replacement. Click on tech replacement and you can see these are my tech replacement. I use it a lot. So to add new tech replacement, you click on the plus sign on the top right and then you type in the phrase you want to add into your tech replacement list. And remember, it would be a, a very good idea if you add only the texts or the phrases that you most likely use on a daily basis. The sentences or phrases that you rarely use don't use tech replacement. It won't help you a lot because the reason why you need to use tech replacement is to type faster for the sentences or phrases that you mostly use every day so that it helps you to type faster. So let's say I always get a call while I'm driving. So I should have like a sentence say I'm driving now and i will call you back later so you see here this is a very long sentence and if you are driving you're typing this it will distract you from driving and also cause accident as well but here the shortcut this is where you type only a few letters and the whole sentence will pop up and again this tag replacement not only it works in the messages app but across the iphone apps so let's say my shortcut is i d for dry and then now and so I just put I D N. So make sure you you have to be wise. Put a shortcut letter that represent the whole sentence because in your mind you may be thinking I dry now. So it should be I D for dry and N for now. And you click save, and it's there at the top. You can see now. Let's go to the messages app again. So if I want to type that whole sentence at the moment, I just type in I D N. You can see it pop up, you just click space, see the whole sentence comes up and you can click send. It's really convenient. And also please choose your shortcut letters wisely because it would be overlapped with the previously set shortcuts. So this is tip number one. Let's move on to tip number two. Tip number two is to turn off auto correction option while typing. Auto correction feature could be useful in some cases and it always make your typing much faster, of course. However, in most cases, I myself find this feature really annoying because it always auto correct what I don't want it to correct or auto correct the word that I'm typing way different from what I have in mind. So I think it is a better idea that you turn this auto correction feature off. To do so, just go to settings and you scroll down to see the word general, keyboard, and you can see the second one is say auto correction, turn that off. Okay, this is tip number two. Let's move on to tip number three. Tip number three is to make sure that your predictive word feature is enabled. Predictive word feature is much better than autocorrection because it predicts what word you might be typing by providing you with the possible word choices to select, but it doesn't interfere with your typing and like autocorrection. So it is a good idea to make sure that this feature is on. By default, predictive word feature is automatically on. So for some reason, like your predictive word feature doesn't show like this. Whenever you type, there's nothing to show up to give you choices. You can just turn it back on by going to settings, general, keyboard, scroll down, and you see the word predictive, turn it on. 
and if you go back to the messages it shows you the predictive word whatever you're typing like I say see it show you this and you just click on it this feature has been on the Android smartphone for a long time and Apple has just implemented it into the iOS system but it's really useful okay this is tip number three let's move on to tip number four tip number four is very basic try to use iMessages instead of regular SMS so again if you are new to iOS environment you may not know what is iMessages but for most of you who are using iPhone for a long time you may know what it is so iMessages and regular SMS if you go to settings you go to messages app and you see at the top it says iMessage and you have this feature turned on using iMessages only need internet connection it does not use your data plan in your phone and as you know that with Richler SMS it will charge you a lot if you send long messages or if you try to send MMS to another person and if you don't know what MMS is it is when you try to send pictures or videos or voices through your regular SMS so sometimes you want to send pictures or videos that you have taken of voice messages that you have recorded to your friend through SMS the mobile service provider would charge you a lot of money for sending MMS like that but with iMessages you can send all of those for free if you have Wi-Fi like I said you don't have to have a SIM card as long as you have internet connection you're connected to Wi-Fi you can send videos photos messages long text messages to your friend very quickly so make sure you turn this feature on like I show you at the moment you just go to settings go to messages make sure iMessage is turned on and usually it's turned off just turn it on and it may take some time and to know if it is iMessage or not you will see it is in blue let's say if I try to send to a person that doesn't use iPhone you can see it is in green the send button is in green as well that's when you know that the person is not using an iPhone or maybe they don't turn iMessage feature on so when like you search for contact and then you can see it's in blue like this the contact in blue which means the person is using iMessage and when you're typing you can see the send button is in blue not green so let's say I type to this email I want to show you if the person has read my email I say hello now you can see it say deliver you hear the sound with no more message you will not see the word delivered like that and once they open that message in their device you can see they say read you know that they they seen your message and to be able to know that they read your message you have to tell them to turn on one more feature here it says send read receipts this one you have to turn on and the person you send to also tell them to turn this feature on so that you and that person will know when a message has been read it's kind of privacy as well I mean if you don't want a person to know that you read their message turn this feature off so when the person is typing back to you you will see the typing back here usually we see a bubble let me show you you can see on the left side you see it's like bubble and it's like loading something so the person is typing back to me when it's send it comes quickly you can even draw on it iMessage feature is really awesome I mean if you have an iPhone you will be blown away by this feature okay this is tip number four for tip number five and above are the general tips of how to use your iPhone effectively the fifth tip is to clean your iPhone every one or two months to get some storage back so to clean your storage you need to download an app from App Store called magic cleaner this app is free so just type in magic cleaner here this one just download it and as its name suggests what this app does is it allows you to clean your phone your i device to get some storage back not a lot but it at least it helps you to clean junk files in your phone and so you see my storage is 40.2 at the bottom left you can see clean junk click on there and say please read you may see an alert storage almost full this is normal tap done during the process of cleaning you may see a pop-up message saying storage almost full but don't worry it's okay it's just part of the process so click ok here it will start cleaning and it, it may take a while so I have to fast forward this process okay done it say good job 159.2 megabytes for clean 
So now I get 40.3 gigabyte storage back. At least I get like 100 megabytes back. It's not much, but I mean, if you've been using your iPhone for a long time and never clean up your storage, you may get more than this. So this is tip number five. Let's move on to tip number six. Tip number six is very simple. is to place your settings app on the dock where you can access it fast and easily, not the home screen. Usually when you buy your iPhone for the first time, your settings app here, will be on the home screen like this and the problem is when you download more and more apps you will have pages like this when you have pages like this let's say you're now on page 3 and you try to use this app suddenly you realize that you need to go to settings app to change something because as you know that settings app is the place for customizations whatever configuration you want to change you always go to settings so why don't you make it easily accessible you do this you have to like exit out of it and then try to find settings app by scrolling back from page to page like this it would takes time uh, not much but uh it would be a better idea if you put it on the dock place that settings app on the dock like this even though you scroll you have like 10 pages of apps that you have installed on your iphone still you don't have to care because the settings app is on the dock dock doesn't move pages home screen move it still doesn't affect your settings it's still down here you can access it easily so it's a very good idea to place your settings app on the dock let's move on to tip number seven tip number seven is to shut down your iphone for 30 minutes on a weekly basis if you hear the word shut down why do i have to shut down my iphone i need to use it if i shut it down how can someone call me well remember that your iphone is like a computer this is a mobile computer when you leave it run without stopping it's hardware including the battery life will be shorter so it is recommended not by me but the phone manufacturer that you turn off your phone completely for at least 30 minutes for its system to cool down before using it again and you don't have to do it every day but I said you do it once a week the best time to shut down your iPhone is at night when you sleep so that you and your iPhone can sleep peacefully and in the morning you can turn it back on or you just turn it off half an hour and turn it back on at a time that you know that no one would call you or just turn it the whole night turn it off and in the morning you turn it back on it's up to you but at least you have to let your iPhone sleep as well and when you turn it back on it's like a fresh new start it's good for your phone tip number eight is also about battery once a month drain your iPhone battery to below 20% and then recharge it so that it will reach its full cycle charge by doing this it will make your iPhone battery healthy and prolong the battery life so as you know that most situations when you see your phone running low on battery like at 40 or 50% you may want to charge your battery again because you don't want it to die out on you so yes you can do that I mean uh, but make sure that each month you have to let it drain below 20% just one time only a month and then you charge it back on until it's full to 100% this is called full cycle charge it will help the battery life cycle to be healthy this is tip number eight let's move on to tip number nine tip number nine is to lock your notes with sensitive information to the touch ID when you go to note and as you know that with iOS 11, Apple has allowed us to lock any node with a touch ID so that no one can access your notes with sensitive information like your emails, passwords, or even bank account information if you've decided to store it there. So to activate this lockdown feature, you need to go to settings and then notes and scroll down and then you see here password. Click on that. And then for the first time, it may not say change password like that. It will let you type in the password. But I already set the password. That's why you say change password like that. So when you type in the password already, don't forget to turn Touch ID on so that you don't have to type in the password every time you want to see a note that you locked with a password. You just scan your finger. It will just open quickly. So after you set the password, just go to notes. And you can see my notes here with a lock next to it it shows that that node has been protected by a password so if anyone else wants to access my node they cannot do it so when they open it they would say this node is locked if they click view note here you say touch id for notes so you just scan use the touch id it will open like that and when you scan one time you see all the notes have been unlocked how can you lock it back on if this is unlocked simple you just quit the app 
if you go back to it again see all of it go back to lock mode you don't have to worry just quit the app it will be back to normal and if for example like you want to add more nodes to the locked list you just click on the node that you want to, to lock down like this one I want to lock that down just slide from the right to the left and you can see the lock icon click on it and it asks you to scan your finger scan it you say locked added and you see all the nodes that you have added have been unlocked again don't worry you just quit the app go back to it see all of it have been locked including the new that you have just locked at the moment to view it you have to scan your finger and in case like you want to remove it from the lock mode just again do the same thing you slide from the right to the left and the icon the locked icon click on it locked remove it is just as simple as that let's move on to tip number 10 tip number 10 is to make sure that press finger to open feature is enabled with iPhones that use home button to access home screen by default if your iPhone is locked and that you want to access your iPhone home screen with a finger scan it still won't open home screen automatically let me show you you see the lock status when you raise it up and when you scan it still doesn't bypass the lock screen mode what you have to do is you have to press on the home button it will go to the home screen and this is really kind of annoying that you have to press the home button every time you want to use your phone so in order to access your home screen automatically once you rest your finger on the home button just go to settings general accessibility try to find the word home button here and then at the bottom you can see the word rest finger to open turn that on so next time that your phone is locked when you raise your phone up and when you place your finger scan on it it will open home screen automatically okay that's it guys thank you so much for watching if you like the video please give us a thumbs up comment down below and subscribe for more useful videos in the future have a great day guys see you in the next video